The kings are about an idea, you see, where every man is free to follow his own path, do his own thing, where every man is a king in his own right. Long before the kings existed, Mr. House, the man who would eventually shape New Vegas, awoke from a coma in 2138. But he didn't step into the spotlight for over another hundred years. Instead, he waited, carefully biding his time until the moment was just right. That moment came in 2274, when scouts from the New California Republic were spotted at Hoover Dam. Mr. House, seeing the opportunity to restore order and power to Vegas, sent his Securitrons out from the Lucky 38 and began rebuilding the city. Despite Vegas surviving the Great War, people didn't immediately settle into the remnants of the old city. It was years before that happened, and when it did, the survivors, described as Vault Tribes, fought amongst themselves. That was until House appeared, directing those who were willing to listen. Out of the countless tribes he used, the largest three, the Mojave Boot Riders, the Slitherkin, and a mysterious cannibal tribe were transformed into the three families, now known as the Chairman, the Omertas, and the White Glove Society. Under House's guidance, they rebuilt the city, establishing it as the free economic zone of New Vegas, just in time to welcome the arrival of the new California Republic. In exchange for help with Hoover Dam and permission to use the defunct McCarran International Airport as their headquarters, House signed the New Vegas Treaty, ensuring cooperation from the NCR and for a time protecting the Strip from annexation. As for the other tribes, those who didn't become the Three Families, they were either scattered or killed. The Great Khans, for example, went to war with House's new serfs, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. After heavy losses, they were driven back into the northern ruins and then out of Vegas entirely, forcing the survivors to settle at Bitter Springs, which is a story for another time. Other tribes disbanded, becoming residents of the Strip, similar to the residents of Vault 21, while others found refuge in the area soon to be called Freeside. While Mr. House valued the area around Fremont Street, he ultimately viewed it as secondary in importance to the Strip itself, building a wall and dividing the two areas. By the time the NCR had set up their new base, Freeside had become a stopping point for those on their way to the Strip, and Mr. House recognized that he could use that to his advantage, filtering out the undesirables who only wanted to cause trouble. Those people could stay in Freeside, while the more reputable patron, those with money or status, could enter the Strip. One of those undesirable people wandered through the outskirts of Vegas, trying to find a new place to call home. Hope came from an unlikely source when the young scavenger stumbled upon an old building, a pre-war relic known as the King's School of Impersonation. Before the Great War, the King's School of Impersonation had been a place where people came to learn how to mimic Elvis Presley, one of the most iconic figures of the old world. Inside the building, the scavenger found strange outfits, records and posters, all dedicated to this figure known as the King. Inspired, the scavenger transformed himself. He took on the king's iconic look, slicked back hair, denim and leather, and adopted his persona too. But it wasn't just a costume, it was the birth of something new. The scavenger, now calling himself the king, began preaching a message of personal freedom and respect, and soon his wanton tribe followed his lead, adopting this new identity and becoming the king's. At the king's side was his lifelong friend, Pacer, or Pace, as the king called him. The two had grown up together, surviving the harsh streets side by side, and this was no different. Together, they explored everything the School of Impersonation had to offer, including the voice of the original king, which they studied using ancient holotapes that inevitably wore out. Which is why, out of all of the kings, only the king himself and his friend Pacer sound like Elvis. Things have been a lot better since you helped with those soldier boys. Thanks again. So, what can I do for you? Who's the king? You believe this asshole man? In Freeside, the kings rule. And the king rules the kings, got it? Did you hear someone manage to fight their way through the chairman? 
and flee the strip after being caught, wonder if they're hiding out in Freeside. As the king's influence spread, Freeside began to change. Under his charismatic leadership, the kings brought a kind of order to the chaotic streets. They offered protection to the locals, charging for services like bodyguard escorts and access to clean water. But despite their tough guy exterior, the kings weren't just another gang. They had a code of honor. Every man is a king in his own right. This belief set them apart from the other gangs in the region, giving them a sense of purpose and pride that went beyond simple violence. But life in Freeside wasn't easy, and the king's reign wasn't without its challenges. As the NCR expanded, their squatters began encroaching on the king's territory. To the king, this was an invasion of Freeside's independence. Pacer, always the more hot-headed of the two, despised the NCR. But his reckless approach often made things worse. His actions escalated the conflict between the kings and the NCR, bringing them closer and closer to all-out war. Despite the growing tension, the king's trust in Pacer, forged through years of friendship, made it difficult for him to control his friend. Yet, even with these internal struggles, the king stayed focused on maintaining the fragile peace in Freeside. He preferred to use words over weapons, always trying to negotiate before resorting to violence, which they sometimes had to do, drawing pistols and switchblades when things got too rough, earning them both respect and fear from the locals. However, the balance, as I've said, was fragile, very fragile, and everyone knew that peace wouldn't last forever, not without some drastic changes. But the king knew his people's limitations. They didn't have the heavy armor or advanced firearms of the NCR soldiers. Their weapons were good enough for street fights, but in a real war, they'd be outmatched. Serving as a pleasant distraction from the responsibilities of leadership was Rex, the king's loyal companion. But his name wasn't always Rex. That name was given to him by the king, Rex meaning king in Latin, showing that despite being a pre-war weapon, recently used by the Legion no less, Rex, just like the other members, was a king in his own right, free to roam the streets of Freeside. While that friendship had its own troubles, there was a more pressing matter. One thing the king hadn't planned for was the future, he had no idea what would happen to Freeside after he was gone. Despite their long-standing friendship, Pacer wasn't a leader who could hold Freeside together, and many in the community knew it. Without the king, everything could fall apart. Outside of Freeside, the king's reputation was mixed. The followers of the apocalypse admired the order the kings had brought to the streets, but criticized how they controlled the water supply and oppressed NCR squatters. This difference in values only deepened the rift between Freeside and the outside world, a rift the king was willing to close, but only under the right circumstances. Ending a video with no canon ending is always a challenge, but the possible endings provide an insight into how dead set the kings were on maintaining Freeside's independence. In the chaos after the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, the future of the kings depended on where they stood and who they stood with. In one tragic outcome, the death of their leader marked the end for the gang. Most of their members were slain by the courier, and the few who survived fled Freeside, disappearing into the wasteland, never to be seen or heard from again. But in another twist, the kings made a different choice. After the NCR's victory at Hoover Dam, they found a new ally in the Republic. What started as an uneasy truce grew into a full-scale effort to help the people of Freeside. Despite the Republic's push for Freeside to join them, the Kings stood their ground, keeping their independence while still working for the good of the people. Though not every alliance ended well for them. In some cases, the Kings' connection with the NCR backfired. Mr. House, watching from the Lucky 38, saw their partnership as a betrayal. His response was swift and brutal. The Securitrons marched into Freeside, and in a bloody conflict, the kings were wiped out, their rebellion crushed under the weight of House's iron rule. In other cases, when the Legion swept through the Mojave, after defeating the NCR at Hoover Dam, they discovered the kings had ties to the Republic. Kaisar's forces were merciless, they flooded the streets of Freeside, cutting down anyone who resisted. The kings naturally fought back, but they were quickly destroyed.
the survivors, if any, scattered into the wastes, never to be seen or heard from again. Yet the king's fate wasn't always tied to alliances. Sometimes they took matters into their own hands. Some of them, angry and defiant, began launching attacks on NCR troops during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. The NCR didn't take too kindly to that, so when they secured the region, they cracked down hard on Freeside, sending a full platoon to wipe out the kings. The streets ran red, and most of the kings were killed, with the few remaining survivors exiled into the wasteland. In another twist, some kings' violent actions earned the favor of Mr. House. They attacked NCR soldiers, and House saw this as proof that they were loyal to New Vegas, not to the Republic. For that, he let them be, seeing their small-scale rebellion as useful in keeping the NCR in check. But in a more ruthless future, the kings took their anger out on the NCR civilians in Freeside. After the battle, they forced all of the Republic citizens out of the area in a bloody purge. Word spread fast that Freeside was no longer safe for anyone from the Republic. The streets became hostile, a far cry from the king's original vision of community and peace. However, the darkest fate for the kings came at the hands of Kaiser's legion. Having no ties to the NCR, the legion offered them a chance to join, but the kings refused. For that, they were enslaved, and after a failed escape attempt, Kaiser's forces executed them all, leaving no survivors. But there were some scenarios where the kings endured. They held on to Freeside, continuing to prioritize the locals over outsiders, though they begrudgingly allowed NCR citizens to stay. And I think I like that one the most, an ending where they never bowed to any outside force, not the NCR, not Mr. House, and certainly not Kaiser, but still allowed peace and community to thrive. In the end, the king's fate was as wild and unpredictable as the Mojave itself. They could be heroes, villains, or simple survivors, depending on the choices they made along the way. Their story, like many other in the wasteland, was shaped by loyalty, betrayal, and the endless fight for control in a world gone mad.